Good, beautiful morning, everybody. Silas back again today on this fantastic day. It is absolutely beautiful out here. A little bit chilly, but it's supposed to get up close to 60 today here in a little bit. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Last week was pretty cold. It was down in the teens and 20s, and it was, it was windy and cloudy and rainy. So I'm really looking forward to some nice weather today. Right now, I'm just getting prepared for what's ahead. I'm just eating my highly nutritious breakfast right here. <laughs> Last week, I was so busy between everything else I was doing that I never had time to eat hardly. I think I ate one bowl of cereal, a bowl of chili, and I think I went to Arby's one time, and that was it. This car here is one of my dad's. This is a pretty clean car. A little bit of rust in the floors, but overall, it's all here pretty much. Not much rust in the body itself. Last tagged in 1963, so it's been sitting a long time. What the deal on this car was, is years ago we went to a place and the guy had this car and he had a couple late 50s GMC half tons that had the Pontiac V8s in them and he had a mid 70s Ford extended cab truck and just a bunch of iron and batteries and just scrap iron everywhere. And he said, I want $1,000 for this Dodge. And we said, no, we can't give you that much. Back in those days, we just crushed everything. Stuff like this just really wasn't that popular, really wasn't worth much. And we said, no, we can't give you $1,000 for that. We'll probably give you like 500 and then we can look at the other stuff. And he says, I tell you what, if you give me $1,000 for that car, you can have everything else on the property. So we said, oh, okay. So we gave him $1,000 for this, brought everything else, and we crushed everything else. We crushed the GMCs and the Ford and all the other stuff. Kind of unfortunate, probably worth some money today, but we still have this car here. And while well, we do, for a little bit longer anyway. This car here, 72 Riviera, this is one of my favorite cars. I always wanted to fix this car up, but you know, I've got too many projects that I want to do and I'll probably never even get those done. So uh, I picked up my favorites and I said, I want to keep those and anything that's not my favorite is going to be for sale. So I put this up for sale. I had a ton of people ask me about it. A ton of people asked for pictures, this and that, and so on and so forth. And just nobody really came through on it, which I thought was kind of shocking because it's such a nice car. But then finally, well, this guy saw it and he says, well, let's make a package deal on several cars. So he ended up buying all three of these. This car here has a little bit of damage, kind of a dent there, a little bit of rust. Uh, yeah, behind the wheels and in the quarter panels back here. But overall, it's a pretty clean car. It's all original. Can't really see inside it. The windows are all covered in dew still, but it's got the 455 under the hood. Not a bad car at all. Very, very restorable. And the guy that's buying all these, that's actually what he does for a living is restore old cars. So I'm definitely glad to see it go to a good home and plus it'll be local. So I'll get to see it when it's done. That'll be pretty cool. And then this old Thunderbird, that's one there. I just bought it just to sell it. Didn't make much on it, but I mean, it was a quick flip. I haven't owned this for very long. I've owned this for about a month now. So that's not bad. Buy it and sell it a month later, make a little bit of money and go on with life. It has an overhauled 390 in it, but the guy started tearing it all apart and I haven't been able to get a hold of him to get the dash from him. He has the dash in his, uh, in his shed. So I need to get that from him. But other than that, it's pretty well all here, just taken apart. It's a little on the rusty side, but these old bullet birds aren't getting any easier to find. And it's all here, like I say, so, and it has a title. So pretty, pretty restorable car as well. So what I'm going to do is my dad's going to help me haul one of them. This one here is kind of hard to haul in my trailer because it sits down between my fenders and I don't want to tear it up. So he's going to haul that on his truck. I'll haul this on my trailer. Then I'll come back later and get the Thunderbird. But I've got to get hooked up to my trailer first. And the problem I'm having is I'm having to back uphill. And every time I get to where I need to be, I put it in park and it rolls back down the hill. And so I tried backing up a little bit extra and then it didn't roll down the hill. So I'm having a really hard time getting it lined up just right. And this trailer here, you cannot move this trailer by hand. If you're not lined up almost perfect, it's not going on that ball. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and lower it down a little bit, grab the loader and set it on there. I'm thankful my dad's here to help me because that's going to be calling that Riviera a little bit easier. But the bad part of that is, is that it makes it harder for me to film because now I don't feel like I can take the time to set up the really cool camera angles and all that sort of stuff. Normally it's just me by myself and so I can take as much time as I want to, but when you got someone helping you, a lot of times they don't want to stand there and stare at you while you lay upside down trying to get just the right angle for 15 minutes. Actually one of the guys that was working for me a couple months ago, that's why he quit, is because he didn't like the fact that I told him that I needed to film everything I was doing and so there were going to be times where he was just going to have to sit there and wait. I don't know why that upset him, he was getting paid to do literally nothing, but some people. I don't think he really wanted to work anyway, and oh well, time goes on.
And there we go, we're loaded up. I just put one cable on the front, one chain on the back. That'll be good enough, we're not going very far at all. Hey guys, real quick before we continue this video, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Brunt Workwear. Now before you fast forward through this part, hear me out. As you guys may know, a couple months ago, they sent me a pair of work boots. I have to say, these are still the most comfortable boots I have ever worn. I am a huge fan of Brunt Workwear. So they reached out to me and they said, hey, we want you to try out our pants. So that's what I'm doing today. I've actually worn these pants a couple times now and I have to say these are just as good a quality as our boots are. They're super comfortable, super lightweight. Sometimes when you buy work pants, they're really stiff until you break them in. These were super comfortable right out of the package. I'm able to climb around without being restricted and I actually dropped a roll of barbed wire on these pants when I was wearing them the other day and it rubbed up against the side of them and it didn't rip a hole in them. So I was pretty impressed with that. And look, I know it can make you nervous ordering clothing and boots and things like that from a company you've never ordered from before. But the cool thing is, is with Brunt, they've got a 30 day return policy. So if you get them, you don't like them, you just send them back get a refund plus right now if you go to bruntworkwear.com slash adventures 10 you can save ten dollars off your order that's bruntworkwear.com slash adventures 10 so if you do a lot of work around the house in the shop whatever it may be treat yourself buy yourself a good pair of pants thank you once again to brunt workwear for sponsoring today's video now let's get back to the action There we go. This tire here doesn't hold air very long. It was flat and it needs air in it to be able to get it off my trailer easier. So once again, eco flow to the rescue. Well, today is not my day. I got about 25 pounds in this tire and then my air compressor, I laid it over there. It gave up the ghost, it's fried. Uh, something inside the motor or something went bad, but I guess I've had it for a lot of years and I've used it a lot of times. So I guess got my money's worth out of it. So I'm like, oh, it's okay. This tire has got 25 pounds in it or so. So it'll be all right. And then I'm hooking up the chains and everything to it. And all of a sudden, somewhere here in the sidewall, it just went whoosh and just went flat. And now it won't take air at all anymore. So, <laughs> oh, well, I think we can get it off there anyway. The other three tires all hold air. It's kind of funny. I actually sold them that car there. That came from an auction I went to a long time ago. It was actually the first auction I ever filmed, but uh, unfortunately I didn't have any audio. So I never posted that, but he used that one for a parts car. And then that one over there was another parts car, but he decided to keep it, so. <laughs> I'm getting quite a few cars of mine in here that he's buying from me. There we go. All three of them delivered to their new home. Yeah, he'll do a lot better with these than I will. They would just sit at my place. He'll actually do something with them, whether he sells them to somebody else that fixes them or he fixes himself. This car here, he actually already started working on. I thought that was too nice to be a parts car, but he's gonna do some V8 work to it and probably uh, just leave it like it is patina-wise. Come on in, All Rod Resurrection. Well, the 
Yeah. Parts off that one over there yeah, is the donor this for this the one. Donor, or this is the, the main build right here. And uh, this is the front, uh, 46, 47 Plymouth. And uh, replace more, strip it down. Boom. Yeah, last time I saw this, it was still pretty rough. Yeah. Had big holes in the floor and things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got floor replacements for it. And uh, doing some really cool stuff. It's going to be black cherry. So we got a cool. frame and a motor out there right now that we're going to set it on. Work on it underneath. You can raise it up all the way. You can even fly 360 if you want to. 63 Nova. Oh, 63 Nova. That's 63 a cool one. Nova, yeah. 65 Impala. 56 Chevy. Right now we're storing the clip up on top of the booth. <laughs> Wherever it works, right? <laughs> it's kind of good shop art, you know? Yeah. Might as well <laughs> use it while you got Dodge it. Dodge up there. Uh, is that off that taxi that's out back? Yep. I remember years ago I went to an auction that had a Corvair convertible just like this. Really? And it was original, but it hadn't been restored, but it was complete. It had been stored in a building most of its life, and I think they struggled to get a $300 bid on it. Finally. Are you serious? That was a long time ago, but... See, and now they're becoming popular again. Yeah. So now everyone's getting them, you know. And then one time we had a lady call and said she had just an old car in her garage. She wanted to go and take $300 for it. And we said, oh, that's more than we can get for a junk car. And she didn't tell us that it was a... 66 or something like that. Corvair had the turbo on it. 58 Dodge, which has some cool uh, bed sides. Um, we did a uh, Roadrunner R6 Red on it. And uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful truck. And uh, waiting on the wood kit for the bed. The new rail. Um, very nice, very nice. Huh. So dust on it though but uh, yeah it's typical 58 he put a 440 in it oh, it's wrapper window. and he also put a rear end out of the road runner there and, you go uh, this one's different because it's got it's got the bed sides that's like a plymouth fury yeah i've seen a few You've of seen them seen this website sides yeah oh man we had one once we drug out of a field it was just a rusty piece of junk falling apart but we still sold for good money oh yeah yeah i like how it has the wraparound window even yeah really cool kind of a rare option yeah yeah the front ends are really cool and uh this is a tailgate over here, but uh, this is uh, this is one of the bed sides that I've been working on, and uh, and I'll tell you what, these things are so rare to find. You can't find replacement parts for any of these vehicles, any of these '58 Dodges. But uh, nope. I've been trying to rebuild this one. The other one, I'm gonna have to. It's already cut, and I'm gonna have to rebuild the whole lower section of it. But oh wow, got some cool tail lights on it. Oh, they they're look sweet cool. trucks. Yeah. I've seen a couple of them at car shows, so it's been a while up in the lineup, but man, this one's, this one's gonna, this is gonna be really, really nice. You can actually, I've been told you can actually make the cars work. Oh yeah? The quarter panels, those, I think the station wagons. Oh really? Huh. I've been told that, I don't if know if it's true. you can find them. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everything, so. Work on it all. This, uh, Lexus 22's on it, and Prius Sport Fury Slick Ride. But uh, just a little fender benders, just a little bump and repair on it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we do it all. We're really need paint body wise, but difficult colors for it. Yeah. This silver's no joke. You yeah. just got to make it match somehow. <laughs> it's right there, so I'll probably end up blending up onto the quarter. So yeah. I have to paint the whole top drip rail and everything, and then the rear whole bumper and blend. Because you got to stretch that silver out to mm -hmm. really get it to blend right. And there's no room for error because outside you can see it, and the way that it flows, you have to almost one step it. Especially on something like a Lexus. Now, if you're yeah. doing, doing a Honda Accord, I mean, just make it halfway good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this this high end, and, and not only that, the Lexuses they have some real nice finishes. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have much orange peel, factory orange peel. So you know, you've got to have it nice and smooth. We come back after we spray with 1500 wet dry paper, and then buff it out, and. Uh, you know, we really, really made it look super nice. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do it all, but we cool stuff. Uh, most of the stuff we been getting is, is all, uh, uh, you know, restoration. That's Throw the cool stuff. Hot rod sign. Every dude that's retired that's got a hot rod wants, wants to get it done. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I like all the stuff hanging on the wall. Someday I'll build me a shop and do that. Yeah, this is actually my, I got a Mach, 72 Mach. That's my old Fender there. I also got a 68 Camaro. And that's not the old Fender Offers, but I picked that one up. And then uh, I got a 
28 little rat rod that I'm trying to build. So I just stuck the grill up there. There you go. Pally grill, a Torino grill, a Mustang. And then, and then I have a part of the hood off of a uh, 370Z. There you go. <laughs> One of these doesn't seem quite like the others. I know, but it was a cool hood. So I had to yeah. throw it up place it was really light. And I thought, you know what? Why not? Yeah. Yeah, Hot Red Resurrections. Really cool place, really nice guy. Check him out sometime. If you ever need a car restored, this is probably a good place to have it done. He is top of the line quality, does really good work. He mainly likes to do body and paint, things like that. He's not big on doing wiring and interior, stuff like that. Now he'll install your interior, but he doesn't actually do the actual upholstery work. But if you need body work done and you want it professionally done, this is the place to do it. All right, now I'm back out here at the yard. I got a guy coming in a little bit to pick up one more old car, but he won't be here for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and eat lunch. Now, since I ate such an unhealthy breakfast, I'm going to try to eat a little bit healthier for lunch. So today what I'm having is a pork tender, a bag of home-cut fries, and a large tray that I made. And then for dessert, I'll probably have another cookie. I'll eat healthy for dinner. All right, lunch is over. Now, I know a lot of times people ask me, how much money do I make on things? How much do I give? How much do I sell it for? And so I feel like that Thunderbird's a good example of a typical buy and sell. I gave $700 for that car. I probably should have tried to offer a little bit less. I was told that it was a complete car with a rebuilt engine. And when I got there, it was a basket case car that's missing some parts that are supposed to still be there. So I'll uh, hopefully be able to get those. But regardless, it is a basket case. All the parts are just stacked inside it, which is unfortunate, it really drops the value. And then also it's not a rebuilt engine, it's an overhauled engine, which if you deal with engines, there's a huge difference between rebuilt and overhauled. So anyway, it's just not worth nearly as much as what I was hoping it was gonna be worth. And so I gave 700 for it, and this guy offered 1,000 for it as is. So I just went ahead and took the money. I figured, well, it's better than me having to piece it all back together. If I piece it all back together and I put tires that hold air and I get the engine to start, I can get more money out of it, but I don't have time for all that. So anyway, I made about $300 in that car. So didn't make a whole lot of money on it, but that's about typical. Sometimes in this business and a lot of times you're operating on pretty thin profit margins. Now I do have the video. The video will make a little bit of money. At the time of filming this, I don't know if this is going to be a sponsored video or not, which if you guys are watching this, you already know if it was or it wasn't. Now I know a lot of times people get upset about sponsored videos and they don't want me to do them. But understand that those are what makes this channel possible. If I didn't have sponsors to help support me, I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff that I do. And so if you see a product that I'm advertising and you just really don't want it, then just really don't buy it. <laughs> There's no need to get upset or anything like that because like I say, the sponsors and I, we work together. I help them, they help me, and it works out for everybody. All right, guys, I've got some pretty good news. I've had a lot of bad stuff happening today, a lot of stuff going haywire like I didn't want it to go. But the good news is, is that I called Harbor Freight and I still have a warranty on this winch because it completely gave out of me on that Thunderbird. I was barely able to get it to work for that Thunderbird. So what I'm probably going to go ahead and do while I wait for that guy to get here on that other old car is I'm going to go ahead and pull this winch off. That way I can take it back in there and get a new one. And the Barracuda is finally sold. That's one there that it's really hard to figure how much we made on that because I have probably four to five hours invested in talking to people and sending pictures and showing it to people and things like that. And if you figure it up by the hour, what I could have made doing something else, we probably would have been better off to crush that car and go on with life. That's the unfortunate side of this business is that people only see the number, they don't see the time and time is definitely money in this business so sometimes if it takes more than about an hour of investment to sell a car unless it's a high dollar car you've already lost money and that's why i'm one of the few scrap yards that actually does take the time to try to save at least some of the old cars 90 percent of scrap yards they take them and they smash them if you've ever wondered why some scrappers are like that that's exactly why but i'm glad to see it go to a good home and that's why i save them is i just don't have the heart to crush them all you can't keep them all so you have to crush some of them but i try not to crush them all you know well guys, there it is. No questions asked. They took the old one back and they gave me that one there. Kind of a funny deal. I walk in the door and I tell the lady at the register, I'm gonna go out to my truck. I'm gonna borrow a shopping cart. Uh, it's a heavy item, I bring them back. So I'm gonna need, I don't wanna carry it. She says, no problem. I go out there, I get it, I bring it back in. And just as I walk in the door, a guy looks over at it and it's all, you know, just laid in the shopping cart, you know, with the cable all halfway out and everything. And he goes, oh, that's not good. 
And I look at him and I look and he's buying one of these brand new. <laughs> so I had to talk to him for a minute. I'm like, man, I use this thing all the time and I probably overuse it. It just sits on my trailer out in the weather all the time. And he's going to be actually putting his inside a toolbox and he's only going to use it once every few months. I said, unless you're dragging something you really shouldn't be dragging with that thing, you're never going to have an issue with it, especially with that two-year warranty. And then on that note, uh, the lady asked, do you want to put a two-year warranty back on this one here? And I said, yeah, absolutely, 100 bucks." And she says, well, actually, you come in here often enough and get stuff. How about you just sign up for the Inside Track membership? I'm like, no, nah, I don't know if I'd use it enough. And she says, well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's $45 for two years. But right now, this winch for a Black Friday, and this is not a sponsorship. I'm just saying this. But anyway, because of the Black Friday deal, if you're an Inside Track membership, you can get this here for like $60 off normal price or $50 or something like that. And so you'll actually be able to save money in the long run. So instead of my bill being $108 with tax, my bill for the Inside Track membership and a two-year warranty on this here was only $97 with tax. So I saved like 10 bucks by signing up for that. But anyway, I'm starting to run out of daylight, so I'm going to hurry up and go ahead and try to get this put on my trailer. I may not get it on all the way, but I'm going to do the best I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I've got a little bit more going on probably Wednesday of this week. I got a guy coming to get some old cars, maybe some other stuff going on. So if that happens, I'll record that. But other than that, I may not record anything this week. Let me know which car was your favorite. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.